you ejected that was then rescinded. What what happened there? I've never seen anything like that. It's ridiculous. It's obvious what's being done out here. It's on a nightly basis. I hope the world can see now what's really going on out here because it's getting ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. DeMarcus Cousins is the most unlucky star of the 2010s, and it's, it, it's not even close. If we did the all-decades team for the 2010s, it's damn near impossible to find any other player over DeMarcus Cousins at the center position. You can even argue that DeMarcus Cousins coming out of Kentucky, he actually had a great argument for that number one pick. But that didn't happen. He went fifth to arguably the worst run organization of the league and definitely the worst of the 2010s. And this was just the start of that unlucky cycle this man had in the NBA. But before we get into all that, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe, turn on notifications. It's free. You probably struggling right now with your pocket, so it's free. That's the good thing. Just do it for me really quickly. When DeMarcus Cousins got drafted in 2010, it really looked like he was going to an ideal situation. Really, the perfect situation. The Kings had just landed the rookie of the year, and mind you, he won it over players like Steph and Harden, so it was a pretty big thing. Tyreek Evans' ceiling seemed to be extremely high, but the one thing about the Kings organization, you know that saying, everything he touched became gold? Like, you can say that about LeBron, everything he touched becomes gold, Jordan, a great worker, whatever. Well, you can pretty much say the exact opposite about the Sacramento Kings. Tyreek's sophomore year, he dealt with a foot issue, which really derailed the rest of his career. And the Kings really didn't make it any better. They constantly changed this man's position back and forth for players like Jimmer Fredette and Isaiah Thomas, who they didn't keep long. When you have so much raw talent like Tyreek had, it wasn't really seasoned yet, but it was raw. It's impossible to develop if they keep moving him back and forth. He never got a chance to really find his footing and that hurt his career as well. So in the meantime for DeMarcus, he had to sit through this circus and basically watch his team miss out on literally every good draft pick. And I mean every one. In 2011, these are the guys they could have had and this is the guy they chose. In 2012, this is the guy they could have had and this is who they chose. Imagine that duo. 2013, it was kind of a weird draft, so it's almost impossible to nail that one, but still, this is who they could have had and this is who they chose. 2014, again, it's kind of hard for me to pin that one, but in 2015, another miss. 2016, more of the same. They had at least a top eight pick for all of DeMarcus' Sacramento career, and they missed out on every single one. And the one they kind of nailed by accident, the last pick of the draft and all that, they traded him the year he averaged 20 points, so they missed out on his prime. Boogie was in Sacramento for seven full seasons, and in seven seasons, he had six different head coaches, and one of them he really liked. Then, after all the Sacramento drama, he gets traded to New Orleans. Everyone's in shock. We're all wondering, how is this going to work out in the new small ball Golden State era and all that? And then on top of that, DeMarcus finds out in the worst possible way. Oh, really? Can you decide? That's what I But nevertheless, their first full season together, they actually started clicking a bit. They were like seven games above 500 midseason, which is actually a big thing in the West. And on January 22nd, 2018, DeMarcus Cousins made history. This man was just really touching his prime. But just four days later, he tore his Achilles after just balling like he was. And this is where it all went downhill. The first team he actually played for in the NBA that made the playoffs he was sitting on the bench and he couldn't even play. Like, that was the sad part to me. The Pelicans swept Portland, who was actually a third seed that year, and nobody saw that coming. And who knows how much better or how much worse they would have been with Boogie. The fact is, we didn't even get to see it. Then, in the summer of 2018, Boogie was in one of the weirdest free agency situations that I've ever seen. His last game, he had a triple-double, and like I told y'all, just four nights before that, he made history. So he was really just tapping into his prime at 26, but he did just suffer the most horrifying injury in sports, and he's a big, so 
what was really his value? The Pelicans didn't offer him the max, and understandably so, but they did offer him $40 million for two years. And I, I, I didn't understand it then, and I still kind of don't now. He took just $5 million to join Golden State and make potentially the scariest lineup ever. Now, as a player of DeMarcus's caliber, I, I, I can understand the ego and the pride that came with him declining that offer. You just made four straight All-Stars and you balling like you were, and you only get $20 million a year when Otto gets 26, Otto Porter. So I get that part. But I, I really didn't get going to Golden State. They already had four All-Stars and he quote unquote betted on himself, but how are you gonna put up big numbers and get that contract in Golden State? They were already set, so I didn't understand that. And looking back on it, it, it was a pretty bad decision. I guess he was just trying to get that easy reign, but that didn't happen. And in just his second playoff game, three minutes into the game, he tore his quad and that's a pretty big injury. Now he did come back for the finals, but Bro, he, he wasn't the boogie that we knew, and that's just being nice. Then, in last year's summer, I mean, his stock just went way down. It didn't even seem like a team was willing to give him five mil, but he did land a pretty good deal. He was back with AD and Rondo, his Kentucky guys. It looked like he had lost crazy weight. I mean, it was just a good situation. But in August, he tore his ACL playing pickup ball, and he got replaced by Dwight. And now he missed the whole season, and he just got cut. So just a quick recap, in two years, a player who's almost 300 pounds has torn his Achilles, torn a quad, and torn an ACL. He's never getting that big contract. At least if you never get paid, at least say you got playoff success. If you never had playoff success, at least say you got your bread. He really didn't get either one. You can argue that of every star in his draft class, he had the best peak as far as individual talent. But out of all those stars, and they all had crazy, gruesome, career-threatening injuries, like they all had crazy injuries. I made a video about this draft class. I mean, it was just cursed. At least they all got paid. DeMarcus is the only one that never got a max deal. Boogie is the most unlucky star of the 2010s, and to me, it's not even close. If you guys like this video, make sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe, make sure you guys turn on notifications. And without further ado, as always, follow my social media sites, do all that great stuff, guys. And until next time, as always, stay tuned.